Here is a longitudinally sectioned specimen of the lower limb. And just to orientate ourselves, we see that this bone is the distal femur. This would be the articular surface. This is the patella. And this is the proximal tibia. This is the epiphyseal region, the metaphyseal region here. And this would be the diaphysis. Surrounding it, of course, we can see the soft tissue of the lower limb, including some skeletal muscle on, on either side of the bone, and then some subcutaneous tissue. So the obvious abnormality is located in the distal femur. It is just abutting on the articular surface here. So it would be involving the epiphyseal as well as the metaphyseal region of the bone. Now, in addition to that, it appears to be quite expansile. It is quite broad um, and it even breaks through the cortex of the bone as can be seen over here. On the cut surface, it's pretty hemorrhagic. It is dark brownish and there appears to be some whitish, uh, fibrous, streaky areas. This appearance is very classical for a giant cell tumour. Why is it classical? Because it affects the epiphyseal, metaphyseal part of the bone. It is often juxta-articular as you can see here. It is also often expansile and hemorrhagic. And the other classical feature is the age of the patient. Of course, we can't tell the age by looking at the lower limb. But uh, in terms of the whole clinical picture, this would usually affect patients uh, who are skeletally mature. So probably in the 20s to 30s, usually quite young adults. We actually can uh, deduce that this patient is indeed mature skeletally because of the absence of the epiphyseal plate, uh, which we would expect to see right about in this region. What would the imaging of this uh, particular pathology show? This is an image that is taken from radiographics and you can see that uh, this is the URL for this particular image and it shows a fairly well circumscribed lytic expansile lesion in the distal femur and often um, in this case, such as in this case, it really abuts on the articular surface. There may sometimes be a sclerotic rim of bone around it as well. On histology, what would we expect to see? Well, as you can see in this section, there will be very obvious multinucleated giant cells. Some of them have got so many nuclei, they can be in the range of 50 to 100 nuclei. Here you can see a smaller giant cell. But in addition, in the background, we will see mononuclear cells uh, with the nuclei that are actually very similar to those of the multinucleated giant cells. So this is a classical appearance. It is a giant cell rich tumour and there's both multinucleated as well as mononuclear cells. Therefore, the combination of the clinical picture, the patient's age, the location of the lesion, the radiological appearance as well as the histologic appearance will help to clinch the diagnosis. And uh, clinically, the patient may present with pain as well as uh, sometimes even pathological fracture because as you can see the bony structure is quite replaced by the tumour. And of course the clinician would then proceed to do the necessary radiologic tests um, in order to clinch the diagnosis.